Hi, Maud. Hi, Tessie. How are you, my darling, and where are you? I am very well, thank you. And um, I'm in London at the moment. This is, I'm born and bred Londoner, so I, I'm home at the moment, which, um, which is nice, but also so desperate for um, nature and to be able to kind of get out of the big city at the moment. But yes, I'm here in London. Oh, very How are you? I'm really good. I'm in Switzerland and I chose not to do my screen save on the back because the weather today is wonderful. We had a lot of uh, really frozen weather last week and today is actually week as you can see it's really hot and it looks really warm in London as well in your screen. It is. We, we keep laughing here that as soon as everyone's told that they need to uh, lock down and we can't leave the house suddenly the sun comes out. It's always the way but it's beautiful here as well. Absolutely. So for the, for the people who are tuning in right now and listening to this um, who don't know Maud yet. So Maud Hurst um, is known for um, her acting career uh, in Vikings, the TV series where she was playing Helga. When we had our Instagram live video, everyone was just saying, hi, Helga, Helga, Helga. And it was like, wow, you know, it was just people from all over the world, India, America, Pakistan, like all over the place. So uh, definitely a must, a must watch. And then you shift it something beautiful happened and you shifted even though you're still an actress but you also shifted your focus a little bit more and created a company called energy rise which is all about mindfulness and yoga practices and healing meditations and all of these beautiful wonderful and timely things that we all need especially during times of corona and lockdown but i don't want to talk about it i want you to tell us all about you how how did you get to where you are today? What is, who is Maud Hurst and her company now? Thank you, Tessie, for that lovely, lovely introduction. So my journey, um, acting kind of came as a bit of a side thing. Uh, my family, so I was raised by my mum by herself, um, who's an amazing woman. She's an artist in a, in a very creative environment with me and my brother and my sister. And my sister and brother are fiercely bright and academic. Um, one of them's now a lecturer at university, the other one is an economic journalist. And um, being the baby of the family from a very academic background, um, I kind of felt a, very, a huge pressure and I was really stressed when I was younger and I felt like I just needed to find my own direction. And when I was about 10 years old, um, I was always very physical and doing gymnastics. And I was spotted by a casting director when I was 10 doing gymnastics and, and she wanted to um, see me for a part in a film. And I didn't really know anything about acting at that time, but at 10 years old I went. And um, for the next five or 10 years, I was just at a regular school, but um, this casting director called Susie Biggis um, kept seeing me for lots of, of, lots of different films. Um, and then when it got to, a few years later, and I, and I suddenly started really loving acting and putting kind of time and energy into it, um, I decided to properly commit and go to a stage school. Um, I didn't really know what that meant at the time, neither did my mum. She just wanted me to be happy, as, um, as parents do. And it was all kind of singing and dancing, and she played the accordion to me singing Edith Piaf um, for me to get into the school. And um, so, yeah, for the next eight years of my life, I went to a performing school. Um, always focusing more on acting and then at 18 um, I got my first um, acting job and decided to um, and got my first agent and kind of did it professionally from from that point so that was my lead into um, becoming an actress and then for the next 10 years um, luckily worked professionally uh, including as you mentioned getting Vikings which was um, I think four and a half or five years of filming so it was a big chunk of, of time to play one character, which is a real gift, especially when the show is good like that, because you get to be in such a huge company. It's such a collaboration with amazing art departments, amazing directors, amazing actors. Um, and Helga, my character, was this Viking hippie. And I think kind of the start of my mindfulness journey subconsciously was happening as, with all the kind of research I was doing during the show. Um, so loved, I love that experience. And Helga really has, as you kind of mentioned, it's got this huge fan base. And so it's been a really lovely way to um, communicate with people all over the world ever since. Um, and then I finished Vikings about maybe three years ago and um, went through, I, was, I had a partner at the time, we bought a house and I kind of thought everything was all lining up. And then all of a sudden, went through a horrible breakup and um, 
he was just not the person that I, I thought he was kind of had to get out of the house and, and sell and move very quickly. And I found that I was in this very bizarre time where I could either sink into a really kind of dark place and think, you know, what is my life doing? This isn't what I pictured and this isn't what I thought, or how can I really look at this time and realize like, how do I get healthy from here? Because I actually started realizing that I'd been really unhappy in the relationship for quite a long time. I hadn't addressed it. And I had a kind of family history of divorce and I didn't want to keep repeating patterns of unhealthy relationships. And I felt like I had an opportunity to, um, to think, how do I get healthy and ask myself the big life questions? Like what makes me happy? Who do I really want to be in the world? And you know, what, what fulfills me? What, and who is Maud underneath? I'd played characters and been behind a camera for, or in front of a camera for 10 years. And um, it's very easy in that profession to become the character and not for people not to really see who you are. Um, and so I kind of, that was the start of me going into mindfulness because it was all the practices like meditation and yoga that those questions started being answered for me. Like, you know, really thinking, wow, this is what makes my body feel good. And start starting to listen to that internal voice that you find in meditation, instead of needing the kind of outside world for approval, I really just started listening to like that gut instinct inside of myself. And so, yeah, that was the start of me realizing the power of um, mindfulness practices. And um, once I had experienced that for myself, I felt this absolute need to share with other people. And, and it, I didn't really make a conscious decision to stop acting and to start the mindfulness company. I just felt like in this moment, I have to share this and I don't know where it's going to lead. And, um, but I just started by learning how to teach yoga and then meditation and then sharing with as many people as I could reach. Um, and that was the kind of natural blossoming for um, Energy Rise, which is my company uh, of lots of different mindfulness practices. Um, so yeah, that was me up to this point. Wow, what a beautiful path. I think uh, we are very similar in some perspectives uh, with past life and with renewal and, and finding yourself and, and really um, doing what feels right to you, uh, which is beautiful because, you know, even still today, especially women, we're scared to be who we feel we are instead of to be, to needing to be what other people want us to be. So I think it's, it's very brave as a woman. And when you hear these stories and we each other share these stories with each other um, to really hear, you know, I had a change, but I, I took this as an opportunity to create something new, not to say that the old was bad, but it was outdated, kind of like um, updating your, your logiciel inside to something more effective and, and well, and, and so on. So beautiful. Thank you so much. So we have, this week, UK Mental Health Awareness Week in the UK. Um, as part of, you know, obviously, um, I have joined as well your retreat, which will start on Saturday this week, which I'm excited, which is all about yoga and meditation, healing meditations, which I heard so many wonderful things about, um, and also Q&As and also workshops on how to develop yourself and all of these amazing things. You're doing so much. It's all just there you know, where you can really in four weeks change a whole new person. So um, for Mental Health Awareness Week, why, why do you think it is important to invest into your mental health? And also specifically, this year's theme is called kindness. So what, does have, what has kindness to do with mental health and well-being for you? For me, um, it's everything to do with it. And um, it starts, I think kindness starts with yourself. And I think without realizing until you shift your focus away from the outside world and back onto yourself, we don't actually know how we're talking to ourselves internally. And I, I've learned and discovered that the way that we're treating ourselves internally is how we project ourselves into the outside world. And so those people that are very angry and aggressive and putting kind of anger outwards, it's normally because they're being really angry and aggressive towards themselves. And this, you know, this theme of kindness is, is so important, but it's not necessarily about giving. I know that so many of us are such givers in the world and it's all about, you know, us trying to be kind outside, but actually like, are you being kind to yourself? Are you listening to yourself? Are you um, respecting yourself? Are you doing the things that feel really good to you? Because when you start doing that, 
you don't have to try to be kind out, outwardly. It just radiates because you're, there's, there's a real kindness at the center of you. Um, so I really, I mean, I, I'm so, I think it's such timely, a timely word for this time kindness actually, um, because we can, we can't really see the outside world in person right now, but we really have an opportunity to slow down and be really kind to um, ourselves. Absolutely. No, I think it's so important. And I think with kindness as well and mental health, linking it to it. And I'm a big advocate for that as you are as well, because we have both experienced as well, the realm of online trolling and all of these, um, you know, like clickbait, uh, negative media, um, you know, all of these things that people are exposed to all the time, even though people don't talk about you when by reading negative things, you're just conditioning yourself over and over and over again that this is what life should be, that you should be angry at people. You always, you know, the media always portrays people that we find the scapegoat to claim something on these people. And I think with mindfulness, as you are practicing it specifically as well, and through the healing, which I would love to get a bit more into detail with that, um, I think we can learn to uh, really feel what is right and wrong because. I think in times today, we, and correct me if I'm wrong, we are very disconnected to our bodies and to our feelings. Um, also during Corona now, there's a lot of anxieties coming out. We have all of these feelings inside us, but we don't really know what to do with it. So, so what would you say during times of Corona, but also um, the, the kindness as part of what we give is what we get. Um, mm -hmm. Can you get, go a bit more in detail with that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I firstly want to go back to a point that you made about uh, online trolling and this, this level of being able to give a lot of anger and a lot of abuse really over online because you're faceless online. It's so much easier to do that when, when you're, you know, nobody knows who it is really behind that screen. And so to be really aware of that when you are giving hate out, it's like to start thinking, am I, you know, again, taking it back to yourself? Am I do like, why am I doing this? Um, and also for those that are reading it to, to kind of set, not take that on board and to kind of separate the fact that um, kindness, if you give what you get, as you said. So if you're giving kindness to each other, you're going to get that back. If you're giving hatred, you're going to just feel that back at you. So to, um, uh, yeah, just to highlight that, that it's very easy to give that behind the screen. But, but even those people that are giving hate, it, like, give yourself kindness because that, that'll change that vibe, I think, um, internally. Um, and what did you, what was the question that you just asked? The, also the healing one, you know, tell us about the power of healing because um, I mentioned as well in your retreat, which I'm joining, we're talking about the theta healing um, mm -hmm. meditation. So what is it about and why is it so important to heal that inner child? Or what does it even mean, the inner child? Because a lot of people will have not heard about that. Uh, until just now. So can you explain about a, a bit about that? Yeah. yeah, so theta healing is a really beautiful energy healing modality. And the idea is um, behind every emotional trauma or behind anything that isn't working in our lives, whether it be something physical or something emotional that keeps cropping up like an unhealthy pattern is a belief system that we have learned from somewhere along our life. So maybe something happens in your childhood and um, without realizing it, your pathways become, that becomes you because let's say you got traumatized at some point in your life and as you're in your childhood, that will stay with you and feel normal for the rest of your life. And so until you started looking at these patterns that happened when you were a child, they keep repeating in your adult life. And so with Theta Healing, it's a really beautiful, gentle modality that looks at like, what are those underpinning foundational beliefs that you have in your body? that are creating this unhealthy environment. And when you realize what it is and what those underpinning things are, you know, for a lot of us, it might be that I'm, you tell yourself internally, I'm not enough, or I'm not lovable because something happened in those early years or you were abandoned by a parent. And so you think, you know, I'm, I'm always going to be abandoned. And we, it's all in the subconscious until you bring in these mindfulness practices and make it conscious. And when you then make it conscious and you realize, okay, this is why, I'm behaving like this, or this is why this thing keeps appearing in my life. Because from a young age, this felt totally normal to me. And that's what the pathways of my body learned. 
And when you realize that it's like energetically, it just shifts and you can, you choose that, you know, I don't want to carry this anymore. And I see it and I know what, where it came from now. And from that place, you, it, your kind of body can let it go, but it's all about shifting the unconscious behavioral patterns into your conscious in order to then be able to shift them. Wow. Well, I'm really excited to, to be joining a retreat and also for the ones listening, you know, the retreat has been sold out sadly, but there will be more. So, uh, and, and also you're giving personalized meditation sessions, but you also do other short courses and so on. You're just such a power woman and such an inspiration. So please go on, on Maud's website. I will post it as well under this video in the YouTube channel. So for the people to go and explore what you're doing, because I think it's really incredible and really, really timely. So our time has passed. I could talk with you forever, as you know, um, and we will talk offline a little bit more about what's coming up for the retreat for us, which I'm excited about. Um, but before I let you go, you are such an inspiration. You have done so much in your life. You have gone through so much in your life, and yet you're still that radiant, beautiful, shining, strong woman that everyone can see now. And I, when I see you in person as well, that your energy is just contagious and your joy and you're always laughing and dancing around as well as jewels. It's just such pleasure when I met you the first day, how, how it felt. So um, what would you tell people as kind of like a key takeaway from you, which is important to you in times of lockdown, but also in times of where, we, where the lockdown goes back and we are getting out a bit more again. So what is a key message from you to everyone in these uncertain times? Yeah, thank you, by the way. That was such a lovely uh, description of me. I don't think I've ever had something so kind said. And so thank you. And um, so right now, I think it is, we have been given the gift of time. And uh, before this, we were kind of on this rat race of life and we um, were completely um, succumbing ourselves to the fast pace of everything and not stopping. So my message is to appreciate this time that we have in lockdown to really slow down and shift your awareness away from your external world and back towards yourself to discover how are you treating yourself and ask yourself that question, what makes me happy? Because this is the opportunity to start giving that to yourself. Um, you are more powerful than you know and um, you only realize that by stopping and listening to yourself. So um, that would be my message. Switch your awareness away from the external to your internal and slow down and breathe. Oh, wonderful. Well, thank you so much. I will definitely do that. And I'm excited for your retreat. Thank you so, so much, Maud, for your time. I will uh, also, during the week, Maud is doing all of these beautiful live videos on her Instagram and post all of these very, very mindful and inspiring uh, posts on her Instagram. So do go and follow her. Uh, you will love it as much as I do. So thank you so much, Maud. Have a really wonderful rest of the week and we will be speaking offline a little bit more. Thank you, Tessie. Thank you for having me and thank you for listening, everybody.